Today we're going to be talking about how to find the arc length of a function. In this particular case, we've been given the function x equals one third times root y times the quantity y minus three, and we've been asked to find the arc length of this function on the interval y greater than or equal to one, less than or equal to nine. Now, the important thing to note about the function that we have here is that our function x equals one third, etc is defined for x in terms of y. So essentially we have a function in this form, x equals g of y. The most common arc length problem you're gonna run into is the opposite case where you have y equals and then a function in terms of x. So this is the most common y equals f of x. In our problem, they've switched it on us and we have x in terms of y, so we have something x equals g of y. When you have a problem like that, you're going to have an interval defined for y, so y on a given interval instead of x on an interval. And your arc length formula, which I've written here, is going to be slightly different than the way it normally is. So normally what you would have is this exact formula, but here you would have dy over dx, which means the derivative of y with respect to x, and your dy here instead would be a dx telling you that you're supposed to integrate with respect to x. But in our case, because we have a function in the form x equals g of y, something defined for x in terms of y, we need to take the derivative of x with respect to y, and we need to integrate with respect to y. So we have dx over dy and dy. But those are the only two things that are different for our arc length formula. Very important, but not a lot of change. So the first thing we need to do is take our function x equals one third square root y times y minus three and find its derivative, the derivative of x with respect to y so that we can plug it in here for dx dy. So we'll go ahead and find the derivative of x, but before we do, let's go ahead and simplify our function. We can expand this function, multiply these things together so that our function is easier and we can, we can take the derivative more easily. So the first thing we'll do is we'll multiply square root of y by y minus three. So let's go ahead and change this. We'll get x equals one third. We'll change the square root of y to y to the one half, which of course is the same thing. So y to the one half times y minus three. When we multiply one third times y to the one half by y minus three, we'll take it one term at a time and we'll get one third y to the one half times y to the first power is y to the three halves power. And then when we multiply one third y to the one half times negative three, our threes will cancel and we'll just be left with y to the one half. So this is our simplified function and now we can much more easily take the derivative. So we'll call the derivative dx over dy since that's the kind of notation we're using here in our formula. So dx over dy, this is just a simple power rule derivative. We'll multiply three halves times one third. Our threes will cancel and we'll be left with one half times y to the one half power when we subtract one from the exponent. So we'll get one half y to the one half and then minus one half y to the negative one half. Now we can go ahead and change these y to the one halves into square root signs. So what we'll end up with is the square root of y over two because y to the one half is the square root of y times one over two is just square root of y over two. Then we have minus one over two. We'll move this y to the negative one half to the denominator and that'll change it to y to the positive one half in our denominator, which then means we have square root of y in our denominator like this. So here's our derivative function. Now we can go ahead and plug it into our formula. So we'll have length, arc length here, is equal to the integral. A and B are defined by our interval that we've been given in the problem. So we're gonna be evaluating on the interval one to nine. Then we'll take the square root of one plus our derivative function. So our derivative function, square root of y over two minus one over two root y squared, and we're gonna be taking the square root of that whole thing, and then of course we have our dy. Now we just need to simplify what's underneath our square root sign and get this function here to a point where we can more easily 
evaluate our integral. So the way that we'll do that is by simplifying what's inside our parentheses here first. We can go ahead and find a common denominator. We can multiply this first term here by square root y over square root y to get a common denominator with this 2 root y. When we do that, when we multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by square root y, so we'll get y minus 1 over 2 times the square root of y, and that's what we have left to square. Now we can go ahead and square that fraction, and we'll have 1 plus, now here we'll square the numerator, we'll get y minus 1 squared, so that's going to give us y squared minus 2y plus 1 in the numerator. In the denominator, we'll have 4y, because we'll square the 2 to get 4, and we'll square the square root of y just to get y. So this is all going to be under our square root sign. Now what we want to do is go ahead and find a common denominator with this 1 and this fraction here. So we'll just multiply numerator and denominator by 4y. So this 1 will change into 4y over 4y. And now we have a common denominator. So our new integral here looks like this. We'll get the square root of y squared. 4y minus 2y is a plus 2y plus 1 all over 4y dy. We'll take the square root of the numerator and denominator separately. So the square root of the numerator, we can factor it. y squared plus 2y plus 1 is the same thing as y plus 1 squared, so we'll be taking the square of that, and then we have the square of 4y in our denominator. Well, the square of the numerator is easy because we have y plus 1 squared, and we have the square root of that. We're just going to end up with one factor of y plus 1, so we have y plus 1 in our numerator. In our denominator, the square root of 4 is 2, obviously, and the square root of y is square root of y. Now the easiest way to simplify this integral is to split it up into two separate fractions. So we'll, we'll split the numerator here and we'll just have the integral from 1 to 9. We'll get y over 2 root y plus 1 over 2 root y dy. And now we can simplify this first fraction here. So we'll get, in fact, both of them. We'll get the integral from 1 to 9 y divided by the square root of y just leaves us with a square root of y in our numerator. So we have 1 half times the square root of y, or y to the 1 half. And then over here we have plus 1 half times y to the negative 1 half dy. Now at this point it's just a simple power rule to take the integral. So remember we'll just add 1 to the exponent and then divide by the new exponent. So we have y to the 1 half. We'll add 1 to the 1 half and we'll get 3 halves. So we'll get 1 half. We're going to be dividing that by 3 halves, which is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal 2 thirds. So we have 1 half times 2 thirds y to the 3 halves. And then for, the, for our second fraction here, we'll add 1 to the exponent. Negative 1 half plus 1 gives us a positive 1 half. So we have our 1 half here. We're going to be dividing by the new exponent, which is positive 1 half. That's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal 2 over 1. And then we get y to the 1 half. And we're going to be evaluating this whole thing on the interval 1 to 9. So 1 to 9 like this. Now before we evaluate on the interval, let's go ahead and cancel some terms here. We can cancel these 2's. We can also cancel these 2's. And what we're left with is a 1 third y to the 3 halves plus y to the 1 half. And we're going to be evaluating on 1 to 9. It'll make it a little easier if we look at these as square roots. So we can change these. Essentially, we have y to the 1 half and then that raised to the third power. So we can say that this is the square root 
raised to the third because this is y to the one half and then raised to the third one half times three is three halves so square root raised to the third power plus square root of y evaluated on one to nine now we can go ahead and plug in our upper limit here nine so we'll get one third times the square root of nine is just three times or raised to the third power is 27 plus square root of nine here is three and then we'll subtract whatever we get when we plug in one so we'll get one third the square root of one is just one raised to the third power is still just one and then plus the square root of one is plus one so we get here 27 divided by three is nine plus three minus one third minus one so here we get nine plus three is twelve minus one is eleven minus one third is the same thing as ten and two thirds which is equal to thirty two thirds and that's our arc length so that is the length of the curve of this curve here x defined in terms of y on the interval one to nine so I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.